Well, we're in the last days here of Fortin A equipment here in the US. We're in the last days of being able to purchase the equipment. And with that, we are seeing new refrigerants be introduced to our market. I've got some gripes with these new refrigerants. I've done other videos that I think you should watch about the overall changes that we're seeing with these new systems. And some of the changes I'm okay with. I'm okay with sensors being installed in the systems and sensing refrigerant leaks. I'm okay with the fact that these refrigerants are slightly flammable, right? I'm not going to get into a big debate over whether or not it's political and whether or not people are getting rich off of this. I think that's a whole nother topic. With all that said, I do think there are five big problems, five big gripes that I personally have with the changing of these refrigerants. And so I want to go into that. I want to dive into these five. I think some of them might surprise you. And so let's dive into it. Number one, I am not a fan of the fact that we are going to have two options moving forward. We have two refrigerants moving forward. And I've done other videos on why there's two refrigerants and which one I actually think is better of the two. To me, the government loves to step in in all kinds of forms and fashions why they don't step in on this one and say, look, folks, you can't be coming up with all these refrigerants and it's in the best interest of the consumer for government, for the EPA to say across the board in residential or at least in this type of system, we're going to use this type of refrigerant. We're going to use this particular refrigerant. Moving forward, we're going to have R32 in some systems. We're going to have 454B in some systems. And again, I've done videos on those two refrigerants. What's interesting to me is some of the companies that are doing videos themselves, some of the manufacturers out there that are saying, oh, this one's better than this one. Well, they're still selling both, right? Some of them are selling 454B systems, and then they're still selling R32 ductless units. It's like, okay, well, I thought you thought this one was better than that. I mean, come on, stop it. I'm not a fan of that. I haven't met anyone that's excited about it, especially those of us that are in the trade. When we went through the transition of going from R22 to 410A, there were times when we were carrying multiple jugs of refrigerants on our vans. Now, refrigeration guys are used to that, right? You refrigeration guys, you carry multiple jugs of refrigerants all the time. It's not that big of a deal to you. But those of us that do residential, you know, you've got your R22, maybe your replacement refrigerants, you've got 410A, and now you've got these two new refrigerants. It's like something's got to give here. So why they couldn't decide on just one, I'll never understand. But whether we like it or not, that's what we've got moving forward. Number two is probably my biggest gripe out of all of this. And that is moving forward, these refrigerants are going to be a gray jug with a red stripe. So gone are the days of green jugs and pink jugs and blue jugs and yellow jugs, all these different colors. Each color would usually signify, hey, this is this type of refrigerant. When we went from R22, which were traditionally more of a green jug, there's exceptions to every rule, but across the board, they were usually green. And when we switched to 410, they were pink. It was very obvious that you were using a very different refrigerant, right? Pulling that pumpernickel pink jug as you walk across the customer's yard and you're heading to their outdoor unit, you got this pink jug. You've got a very different refrigerant there. The problem I see now, I know what you're thinking. Well, Josh, they should read the jug. They should read what's on the box. This should not be an issue. I can just already see it. It's like a, I'm being a psychic here. I can see an approach apprentice or just someone not paying attention accidentally putting the wrong refrigerant in a system because they're both that light gray-ish color, that off-white creamy looking color, and then they've got a red stripe. There's nothing distinguishing them apart from one another other than maybe it'll say what type of refrigerant is in it just written on the jug there. So me personally, if I was still in the trade, I sold my business. I now teach heating and air guys how to do what we do. But if I still had my business, I would probably be putting big giant X's on one or the other, you know, just trying to make sure my employees don't make that mistake. What could happen if you accidentally put the wrong one in there? I don't know, maybe nothing. The world's not ending if it happens, but there are cases where if you were to accidentally do that, maybe, just maybe, it's gonna be harder on the components in some way. The discharge temperature is different between the refrigerants and the pressure is a little different, not a lot, but 
a little different between the refrigerants and I could just see maybe it causing an issue. And of course, if you were going to do it right, if your apprentice put the wrong refrigerant in there accidentally, then you're going to now have to recover all of that. We're looking at a lot of waste at that point over just the simple fact that they could have designated the tanks of refrigerant a little better. Number three, there's a lot of misinformation out there. One of my big gripes here where there's a lot of folks running around saying literally simple things that are just not true. There are folks running around saying there's propane in these refrigerants and that's why they're flammable and there's not. And there's folks running around saying that this stuff's super highly flammable and our houses are going to blow up. I saw a video online of another country, a third world country where things were blowing up, right? I've also heard that this litigation's coming out and they're going to pass this bill and just so much misinformation's being thrown around. All this noise, it's hard to sometimes find out what the truth is in all of this. Hopefully we're going to continue to get to the bottom of it on our YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe if you haven't, but the amount of misinformation that's out there on these new refrigerants is a little overwhelming. It's just crazy. Number four, the new tools. A little bit of a gripe on that, especially those of us that have invested lots of money in some of the tools that we already own. And we're going to continue to be able to use those tools for a while because 410A is not going away overnight. With these A2L refrigerants, some tools need to be A2L compatible. I'm not griping so much about the whole left-hand thread thing. If you're not aware, the new refrigerants on the non-refillable cylinders will be left-hand threads, but the tools themselves, some of them have to have a DC motor or have spark proof components or fill in blank. The leak detector has to, you gotta make sure it does its job, that it's gonna be able to pick up that refrigerant. There's other requirements now. We've gotta have ventilation in confined spaces and we've gotta have fire extinguishers. To me, a lot of that stuff we should have been doing already and now it's required, right? If you were working in a confined space before anyway, even if the refrigerant wasn't flammable or it was very little flammability, as a lot of the A1 refrigerants are, to me, you shouldn't be breathing a lot of the stuff we're breathing anyway. You should be blowing fresh air into these confined workspaces anyway. And then fire extinguishers are a no brainer, especially if you're doing brazing and stuff like that. So again, I'm not griping about any of that stuff. You know, to me, that's part of the job. That's another day at work, right? Another day at the office. But a lot of these newer tools, I think it's valid for especially small companies, a, a one man show, a one van show, a guy that is just trying to get by and take care of his family and he owns a small business. And now he finds out he's going to have to invest in a ton of new tools just to get the job done. It's just a little hard to digest sometimes. And then finally, number five, my biggest gripe might be the fact that they're kind of forcing this. This has been forced pretty quickly. And you might say, well, Josh, we've known this has been coming for a while. I agree, but there's no overlap. There's no beginning and end of this timeline that overlaps. In contrast, we were using R22, 410A came out there was a lot of overlap. We saw systems come out in the early 90s that have 410A in it. And then for a while, like a decade or more, you could buy both. You could buy an R22 system or a 410A system. And then we eventually got to a point around 2010-ish where you could still get R22 systems. Forgive me, I don't know the exact year, so maybe somebody does know and you can comment on this video. But Whatever year it was, 2010, 2012, we were still able to get R22 systems, but they were dry charged with nitrogen, right? You would have to add the refrigerant in there. And so again, there was a lot of overlap. You could buy 410A way back in the early 90s and then buy an R22 system all the way up until 2016. There was a lot of overlap. Whereas with this, it's a very little bit of overlap. Very quick transition here. We've gotten to the point now where 410A equipment, I think you can still get it, you can still sell it, but starting next year, 2025, we will not be able to sell or install full systems. That's what they're telling us, at least where I live in the country, and I think that's the case for the entire country. And then, of course, these new refrigerants, you might say, well, Josh, that's because the new refrigerants have been out for decades now, and we've got to get rid of 410A finally. No, no, we are just now, with some brands, getting our hands on these A2L refrigerant equipment for the first time ever, like 
months away from this whole transition. There were some states, including the one I live in, that did not even approve the A2L refrigerants until this year, until January 18th of 2024, Virginia had not even approved it yet. Now, I know there's other states. Florida, I think, approved it way back in 2021. They've had the opportunity to get their hands on R32 ductless units for a while. Again, the conventional systems, the unitary equipment, it's new for all of us. We're just now starting to get our hands on some of this stuff. I think they forced it. I think the transition is really fast. Hopefully, wiser heads prevail. And as time goes on and as we get into the next year, maybe they'll buy us a little more time for this overlap. This transition is undoubtedly much more faster than the last one. And it might be a little bit of a snapshot of things to come. We shall see. Let me know your thoughts. Do you have any gripes with these new refrigerants? Love to hear about that. Leave us a comment down below. If you like this video, I think you'll like this one even more. It's where I go over six things that limit your options if you're upgrading your HVAC system. Thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button. We'll see you next time.